In the headlines, Jabi Mall shut down following U.S. Security Advisory on Terror Risk. Reactions trail Central Bank of Nigeria's announcement on new Naira nodes in December. Displaced flood victims in Jigawa lament poor hygiene practice in camps. Away from Nigeria, Ethiopian government accused of deadly airstrikes on Oromia region. Hello and welcome to Trust News Updates. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for joining. And now the details. Jabi Lake Mall, one of the popular shopping outlets in the Federal Capital Territory, has shut down. The development comes amid tension of a possible terrorist attacks in Nigeria's capital. At least five foreign missions issued a warning notice to their citizens to avoid non-essential trips to Nigeria's capital over possible attack. In a statement, the management of the mall apologized to customers for any inconvenience caused, adding that the decision is in the overall interest of the safety of all staff and customers of the mall. Meanwhile, two terror suspects have reportedly been arrested by the Department of State Services operatives who stormed Trademore Estate in the Lugbe area of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. The security operatives were said to have shut the entrance and exit gates of the estate while the operation lasted. Two suspects said to be siblings were taken into custody on an allegation of terrorism. This happened less than 24 hours after the United States and the United Kingdom warned of a possible terror attack in Abuja, especially targeted at government buildings places of worship and schools, among others. The U.S. government has authorized the departure of its non-essential employees and their families from Nigeria. The Nigerian Air Force has instituted a committee of officers to compile all allegations of accidental airstrikes on civilians, as well as review the circumstances leading to such strikes. The Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Oladayo Amao stated this on Thursday at the opening ceremony of the 2022 Air Operations Seminar in Uyo, the Akwaibom State Capital. He said that the committee will come up with far-reaching measures to mitigate further incidences of collateral damages on civilians during NAF operations. Amao noted that the investigation aims at promoting accountability will allow NAV to learn valuable lessons to avoid or mitigate similar cases in the future, as well as take extra measures to minimize civilians' harm and casualties in conflict areas. On Nigeria's security challenges, he noted that the armed forces of Nigeria have made significant gains in curtailing and degrading the resources and capabilities of miscreants that seek to destabilize the nation. While congratulating 17 young pilots, Amao implored them to be prepared for the tax ahead. Now, the federal government says Nigerians should stop spreading unverified news but should be assured that relevant agencies are on top of security situation across the country. Minister of Thanks Information Laya Mohammed spoke on Wednesday while reacting to the second travel advisory issued by both the U.S. and U.K. governments to their citizens in the country, insisting that Nigeria was safe. He spoke on a day government officials explained to Nigerians what had been done to mitigate the massive flooding across the country. They spoke to journalists at the State House in Abuja after the weekly meeting of the Federal Executive Council. Kende Amodu reports. 24 hours after the Minister of Information had accused the governments of the U.S. and the U.K. of spreading fake terror alerts, the U.S. had upgraded its security advisory to a level four, granting emergency services to its citizens. But the information minister says the advisories were not properly analyzed by Nigerians and is advising citizens both at home and abroad to stop demarketing their country. Clickbaiting which is you find a story which is not verified and you immediately share it. It can only cause panic. But I want to reassure 
both citizens, non-Nigerian, Nigerians live in this country, that the security agencies are on top of this matter. Of course, the terrorists would not stop to try to embarrass or intimidate government. But what I'm saying is that this country is safe. The federal government, it seems, is on the defensive this Wednesday and has had to defend its response to the massive flooding that has occurred across the country. Well, there is no technology on earth, none, that can tell you the extent of the flood. None whatsoever. You walk on the basis of data that you have before. Now that these trains, the rains have come, that is what hydrology is all about. Now that we have had this rain, this is a record. And now we are resetting the clock. We have commenced distribution of relief materials to affected states and the Federal Ministry of Health has been requested by my ministry to interface with the state's ministries to intervene in medical related matters is in every state. We have a controller for works, we have a controller for housing in every state. So it's not in every instance that uh, you will probably see me or the PAMSEC or the Minister of State because the work starts from the field. In the final analysis, despite the back and forth, what is important is what is done to mitigate the emergency that has arisen from the crisis. The cabinet members are pleading with Nigerians to join hands with government at all levels with all NGOs and the private sector to find a lasting solution to the problem. From State House Abuja, Kende Amudu, Trust TV News. Now, staying with security matters, security experts say that security challenges in Nigeria can only be tackled if there is will on the side of the government. The experts believe that if properly equipped, security agencies can end security challenges before the end of the year. The report. Nigeria has been battling security challenges like Boko Haram insurgency, banditry, cartel rustling, among others. Despite effort by the security agencies to tackle the menace, these challenges continue to linger for over a decade, with many Nigerians forced to relocate to safer places. Many feel relieved when Interior Minister Rauf Arekbeshola said government will end insecurity before the end of the year. Also, the Chief of Staff to President Muhammad Buhari, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, has said that Nigerians will begin to see success in the fight against terrorism and other crimes. However, security experts highlighted some of the setbacks recorded in the fight against insecurity. A little bit hamstring the order that has been, you know, affecting the, the general move, I think is the strength. When I say strength, the number of the fighting troops. If you look at the land area, honestly, left, right, center, if there is, if there is a, 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 a body of men fighting in the center, there should be on the left of it another body of men on the right of it, body that is neighboring fighting this thing. In case we hit there, this one, if there is an escape, you block here, block. This is what I mean. So that's that. Ending insecurity completely is going to be very, very uh, difficult. Even in the Americas or the UK, uh, in, in China, in Germany, in, in other countries of the world where you have high security network in terms of technology and manpower, uh, you still find a pocket of crimes here and there. According to them, ending insecurity is achievable only if there is will to do so. If the will is there, it is very much achievable. You understand me? What are the ingredients of the will? Very good uh, uh, equipping of the troops that are fighting. Um, more intelligence report from the general public. Um, much more prayers from the general public. Nigerians are hopeful that security challenges will be a thing of the past in no distant future. Bele Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. 
A civil society organization says refusal of hospitals to treat gunshot victims without submission of a police report is contrary to the provision of the law. Addressing a press conference in Lagos, the executive director of Crime Victims Foundation, Glory Ebuji, said that despite the compulsory treatment and care of victims of gunshots and accidents bill, which was passed into law in 2017, some hospitals still reject gunshot victims leading to loss of lives. She cited examples of victims who lost their lives due to refusal by hospitals to treat them, saying that life is sacred and should be treated as such. Regrettably, in spite of the fact that there is already a law on the compulsory treatment of gunshot and accident victims, without making the submission of police report a condition before treatment, some Nigerian hospitals have continued to demand for police report before putting the lives of such victims at risk. In the last 18 months, Nigeria has lost some, some of her citizens through careless refusal of hospitals to accept the victims for treatment. While Nigerians await the amendment to the gunshot and accident victims law, we wish to call on all the other states of the Federation, which are yet to domesticate the law, to do so in order to prevent an escape, an escape route for hospitals and medical staff who will want to plead the non-existence of such law in the states, since the issue of health is in the concurrent list of the Constitution. Chinese national Gen Kuangrong, accused of killing his Nigerian lover Umokulsum Buhari, has denied charges leveled against him before a, fair, a high Kano High Court. At the resumed hearing on Thursday, Kaduna State Attorney General Musa Abdullahi Lawal presented the court with an interpreter, Gua Kumru, from the Chinese Embassy in Nigeria. He said that sequel to the adjournment of the trial over the absence of an interpreter, the ministry wrote to the embassy, which availed them with one. When the charges were read to him, the accused denied the content of the charge leveled against him, while the attorney general prayed the court to adjourn the case, to, adjourn the case by two weeks to enable them tender witnesses on the 14th, 15th and 16th of November. Defense counsel led by Muhammad Balarabi Ang Azubi however objected while Justice Sunusi Maaji adjourned to 16th, 17th and 18th of November for further hearing. Nigerians have been reacting to the recent decision by the Central Bank of Nigeria to redesign three of the Naira nodes uh, major denominations. The new nodes which will be released by the December 15th. I expect us to re replace the old notes from January 31st, 2023. This decision has elicited responses from Nigerians who are asking how much of a difference this change makes to the country. Chamo Dabeng reports. The three denominations the CBN plans to redesign, according to the Apex Bank's governor, Godwin M. Fiele, are the 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira notes. The move approved by President Mohamedou Buhari has so far garnered several reactions from the public and raised many questions, one of them being whether the move by the CBN is a misplaced priority, considering the several challenges the country is facing. Well, I will start by commending his effort, but the time I will have loved him to wait. This dispensation has a little month. The current dispensation has a little month left. This is a type of project he should bring upstream when the new uh, dispensation comes, comes on board. Are you hearing me? The, this current uh, administration has about a few months left. Uh, let him wait. Let him be patient. Let him wait. Let the new people, let the new administration, let them come, come on, on board. They will can think about that. When I read this uh, news yesterday, in fact, uh, I was not happy. Because from the look of things, it's like the federal government have lost focus to me. The federal government have lost focus. When we are talking about insecurity and other things, uh, hunger, 
and there are a lot of challenges we are facing in this country but the federal government are telling us they, that they want to redesign uh, uh, NERA. Haba is 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 uncomfortable. So I'm not happy with this uh, development because the cost of printing or redesigning this NERA it will go a long way by helping the poor masses in the country. In a bid to mop up the excess money in circulation, could the CBN inadvertently create a new set of problems for Nigeria? Let's look at it from the point of the economic impacts as a policy. With that impact in coping the rising inflation figure, the answer is no, because it's actually counterproductive. And if let's also look at it from the time frame they are looking at, they are just looking at 90 days, three months. How could you succeed to take away about close to 3.4 trillion naira within 90 days from the circulation? That's impossible. That's a total policy somersault. You are going to pray, put a lot of pressure to the system. And that is not welcome at this very point in time. You are using 90 days to do such kind of a hooch. In other clients, they give one year, six months minimum. Why are you going for 30, 90 days? It's going to put a lot of pressure on those who are holding such cash. With barely two months between the release date and the deadline, is the timeline given realistic? And how well thought out is the plan by the central bank? Uh, this is the time of politics and politicking. Elections are around the corner, and if the policy succeeds, fine and good. But if it backfires, then it will be uh, it will likely have disastrous consequences for the ruling parts. And from the analysis I have read and had, uh, okay, so far by the experts, it can go either way. And so the Buhari administration is taking a very, very big risk, which may well turn out to be disastrous for the APC uh, and all its candidates uh, from the presidency uh, downwards. Because experience has shown that governments usually give these kind of deadlines only for them to extend them. Uh, so probably at the back of their minds, uh, they may have these plans that if uh, there are outcries, or if it is very obvious that uh, six weeks uh, will be inadequate, there may be extension. Whether good or bad, Nigerians have one option, and that is to act accordingly. Chamun Dabeng, Trust TV News, Abuja. This is the news update on Trust Television, coming up shortly. We'll take a look at rape cases on the rise in Katsina. Details of this and more after the break. Welcome back. You're watching the news update on Trust Television. Here's a reminder of our top stories. Jabi Mall shut down following U.S. Security Advisory on Terror Risks. Reactions trail Central Bank of Nigeria's announcement on new Naira notes in December. Now, flood has submerged so many schools in some communities in Delta State. Our uh, correspondent uh, reports that primary and secondary schools were affected by the flood. Some of the schools are sacked by the flood includes of Rode Primary School and virtually all schools in Ofagbe and Igbide communities in Isoko South local government area. Uh, the flood did not spare schools in communities under Patani and Bomadi as several victims have relocated to safer boards with their children who no longer go to school. The State Commissioner of Information, Ehedu Charles, insisted that children are going to school, adding that the state government has established 
learning zones in IDP camps to avoid the dislocation of academic calendar within the, the camps. Residents of Karanaya and part of uh, Hadeja in Jigawa state who were recently displaced by floods are lamenting the lack of adequate hygiene materials and portable drinking water because of recent floods. They are now living in temporary IDP camps provided for victims of the flood in Jigawa. The Gandun Sariki camp in Hadeja local government area which is a primary school building where the IDPs and the students share classrooms has only one source of water. Kaltume Isa, one of the victims of the Gandun Sariki camp in Hadeja local government area, lamented how their toilet is contaminated and unhygienic due to insufficient toilets in their camp. Meanwhile, the acting commissioner for health in the state, Salih Sumazu, says that the government is doing its best to control the outbreak of cholera in the camps and other communities affected by floods across the state. Now, police authorities in Katsina have raised alarm over increasing rape cases in the state from January this year till date. The police command recorded 198 cases of rape with 207 suspected rapists arrested. Abdullahi Amadi has details of this. The police spokesman SP Gambo Isa explains that while the police command is investigating cases, many suspects have been taken to various courts for prosecution. Similarly, rape cases are also pending at the Ministry of Justice for legal advice to facilitate proper prosecution. It was discovered that part of this uh, country, the Northwest region, especially Kano, Kazuna Jigawa, are having this uh, alarming rise in cases of uh, rape. Not only rape, but uh, even in abuse of uh, drugs. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, what we have been doing uh, to see that uh, uh, in collaboration with uh, relevant stakeholders like the traditional institution, the, the religious uh, leaders. Not only that, even the NGOs like RAPA and some, other, uh, and some others, we are working in partnership to see that uh, communities are being sensitized uh, so that uh, uh, the issue of rape, other violent uh, crimes against women and girls have uh, come down in the states. Teenage pregnancies from the reported rape cases also remain a source of worry for the police calling on relevant stakeholders to engage parents on the responsibility of ensuring proper parental guidance and control of children. The Federation of International Women Lawyers and the Human Rights Network in Kasana State are concerned about the many frustrated cases of rape by the police operatives. When you look at what is happening, sometimes we don't know whether it's a psychological problem or a mental problem, or is, a, is it that they are taking drugs, or is it that they are using these children for any chap or juju? Because we don't even understand why. A 70, 60, 50 year old be raping six, four, seven year old. And when you go to the other side, you see 20 year old, 17, raping 16, 17, eight, 15 to, to 17, probably maybe a lot of I love you, I will marry you. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the other way, I don't, we don't know. But there is a concern and there should be a research on that issue. Aggressive media campaigns and a quick dispensation of justice, many believe will help in addressing the menace. Abdullahi is my Amadi, Trust Television News, Katina. The mayor of Kano, Aminu Adubayaru, says the Islamic Development Bank is impacting the nation's economy and helping to address rising poverty. Bayaru played host to the president of the Islamic Development Bank, uh, Mohammed Suleiman, on courtesy visit to his palace. The emir said that the bank has become an enabler for job creation and empowerment for the poor people. Dr. Al Jassa told the emir that Kano will benefit from the bank's $90 million agro pastoral development project.
We are aware that the Islamic Development Bank has over the years contributed in no small measure towards poverty alleviation and the provision of infrastructure in, in its member countries with the aim of enhancing the living condition of the people. For this and many more, we commend the bank and its leadership and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to guide the leadership as it scares the affairs of the bank for the good of humanity. It is an honor to be in the presence of all of these distinguished people. You are surrounded by your highness. We in the Islamic Development Bank believe strongly that cooperation and support of our people who are in need is an Islamic obligation. And this is why I wanted to come here in person to observe by myself and for myself what is happening here, especially as far as the implementation of the projects we have, particularly in the agricultural and pastoral area and all of the other elements of the project, including the veterinary lab and the veterinary care for uh, the pastoral economy you have in this region. And away from Nigeria, two organizations from Ethiopia's Oromia region have accused the army of conducting airstrikes that have killed hundreds of civilians there in recent days, just as peace talks on the separate Tigray conflict were about to start. Government and the army spokesperson did not respond on Thursday to requests for comment on the accusations made by the opposition Oromo Liberation Front and outlawed armed splinter group the Oromo Liberation Army. A civilian in Oromia, which is in western Ethiopia and surrounds the federal capital, Addis Ababa, said that he witnessed an air raid on Sunday in which about 60 people, including his uncle, were killed. And that's a wrap on the news update. You can watch more via all our social media platforms. Don't forget, you can watch us live on YouTube by subscribing. I am Ayuba Ila. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.